Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how I created this book cover for this delivery logbook using Affinity Designer. And I'll also be showing you how I modified some of these graphics so that it meets the requirements of websites such as Freepik, which require you to modify their graphics. So I'm going to be using Affinity Designer for this tutorial. And if you want to follow along, you can also use Affinity Designer or Photoshop or Canva or any other similar software to create your own design. So I'm just going to open up Affinity Designer and then I'm going to click on new document and then over here you can see that I already have my presets because I often use Affinity Designer to design my books so my book size is going to be 6 times 9 inches DPI is going to be 300 over here I'm just going to change millimeters to inches and then I'm going to tick this box create artboard and then over here you can either choose RGB or CMYK usually there's no difference when it comes to the books being printed I often order author copies of my books and I don't really see any difference between RGB and CMYK when it comes to these books being printed however as CMYK is supposed to be used for print I'm going to select CMYK and then the rest of the settings I'm just going to leave them as they are and then I'm going to click on create so as you can see I have my artboard here so what I'm going to do now is search for and download my first graphics so I'm over here on vecteasy.com so as my cover is for a food delivery logbook I've typed in food delivery here so you can see there's all these choices which I can potentially download so what I did was I searched through these graphics to find something that's suitable for my particular cover this one over here looks okay and I think it will go well with a cover but I've decided to use this one and sort of modify it to my requirements so I'm just going to click download and then once that's downloaded I'm going to open it up once again using Affinity Designer I can also use Adobe Illustrator but for this particular tutorial I'm going to use Affinity Designer so what I'm going to do now is you can see that there's all these elements which I don't need on my cover so I'm just going to select one of them and then I'm just going to keep hitting the delete button on my keyboard and you can see that it automatically selects them and starts deleting them I'm going to delete this text here and then now what I'm going to do is group together this vector here as a singular graphic and then this phone here as another graphic so you can see that at the moment they're all separate elements and I can just move them around so I don't want that so I'm going to group all of it together so what I'm going to do is firstly select this figure and then you can see that it's also selected some of the parts of the phone so I'm going to hold on to the shift button and deselect them and then I'm going to click on command and G to group it together. So now you can see that I can move this graphic around as one unit. Now I'm going to do the same with this phone. So I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to click on command and G to group it. And now you can see I can also move this phone around as a singular graphic. The next thing I'm going to do is copy both of these onto my cover. So I'm going to select both of them and click on command and C to copy. Head over to my cover file and then click on command and V to paste. I'm just going to resize them. And then just arrange them according to how I want them to be placed on my cover. So I'm just going to leave mine like this. At this stage what I can do is just add in a plain background and then my text. But it's going to look pretty dull. So what I'm going to do is download another graphic and then use that as my background. So you can see here that I'm on freepick.com. I also have a subscription with them. So what I'm looking for now is sort of like a city background. So the first keyword I typed in is city, but I couldn't really find anything that's suitable. So then I decided to type in food delivery to see if I can find a background. So after having searched for a bit, I found this graphics here. So what I'm going to do is take out this element here in the background and modify it. So I'm going to click on download. And then once that's downloaded, I'm going to open it up. So what I'm going to do is single out this city background here. And then you can see that there's a few holes that need covering. So what I'm going to do is create boxes on top of them. And then I'm going to select all of them. And then I'm going to click on this add button here at the top. So now you can see that all of these shapes have been compounded to create a singular shape. So what I'm going to do now is copy this onto my cover. And then I'm going to resize it.
and then just place it on top of my cover based on how I think it look good and then you can see that this shape isn't long enough so I'm going to do the same thing again to make the shape longer so I'm going to create a rectangle select both of them and then once again click on this add button at the top so now you can see that it's filled in this bottom bit and now with this shape selected I'm going to right click on it go to arrange and then move to back the next thing I'm going to do is add in a background color to these buildings so I'm going to create a rectangle by clicking on the rectangle button here and then just drawing out a rectangle and then once again I'm going to right click on it go to arrange and then move to back I'm just going to select a random color for the time being The next thing I'm going to do is change the color of these buildings. So I've decided to use a blue color. So I'm over here now on coolers.co and over here what you can do is you can find colors that go well together and are matching. So I found this blue color here. So if you keep clicking the spacebar button, the colors change and whatever colors you see on the screen are colors that go well with one another. So I've decided to use this blue color here as of course the color of the sky is blue. So I'm going to copy this code by clicking on command and C to copy. And with the background selected, I'm going to double click here and then just paste the code here and then click enter. The next thing I'm going to do is go back to coolers, copy this code, paste it here. And then I'm going to click on this button here, view shades, and then I'm going to select a slightly darker color. I'm going to copy this select this background element click on this fill box at the top and then you can see there's swatches there's color there's gradient and this particular color is a gradient so i'm going to select one of these and then over here i'm going to change the this lightness to rgb hex sliders and then i'm going to paste the code here and you can see that there's a blue shade here the next thing i'm going to do is paste the color here as well so once again i'm going to click on this color box and then paste the code here. Now what I'm going to do is click on this box once again, go to lightness, and then what I'm going to do is slide this to the right to select a lighter color. And then I'm just going to play around with this to find a gradient that suits my cover. So that looks okay, so I'm just going to leave it as that. The next thing I'm going to do is add in my text. So I'm going to click on this text button here, and then type in my text, which is going to be delivery logbook. So I'm just going to make this bigger. Copy it by holding onto the option key and then just dragging it underneath. And then I'm going to type in logbook. Now at this stage, what you want to do is find a suitable font that goes well with the cover. So you're going to test out all of the fonts you have. And in my case, what I'm going to do is use a font that's called PT Sans Pro. So I'm going to type that in. Over here, I'm going to select extra bold. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And then over here in the alignment tab, I'm just going to center it. And then you can see here that it says align to. So I'm going to select artboard. And now you can see it's aligned exactly in the center of the cover. The next thing I'm going to do is you can see that it seems like this driver and motorcycle are floating. So what I'm going to do is add in a line here and here so that it looks like it's rooted to the ground and not floating. So I'm going to click on this pen tool here and then just draw out a line. And then where it says stroke here, I'm going to make it two points. And then for the color, I'm going to use the same color as the top of this building. So firstly, I'm going to copy this color, the code of this color. Select the line and then paste the code here. and then just create a duplicate for the other wheel. So now you can see that it looks like the motorcycle is on the ground. The next thing I'm going to do is group everything together. So I'm going to select it all and then click on Command and G to group it. So now you can see that I have my front cover complete. So what I'm going to do now is create my back cover. So I'm going to click on this artboard tool here and then just draw out a rough artboard for my back cover. 
and then over here at the bottom I'm going to type in 6 inches for the width and then 9 for the height. The next thing I'm going to do is create a rectangle on top of it. Once again making sure that it's the correct size. So 6 inches by 9 inches. I'm going to center it to the middle. So align horizontally and then align vertically and then click on apply. And then for the background color I'm going to use the same color as this. So I'm going to click on this color picker tool here and then just select this color. The next thing I'm going to do is download my cover template so you can see that I've already put in my, my book information. So I'm going to click on calculate dimensions and then I'm going to click on download template. And then once that's downloaded I'm going to click on file, place and then place my template. And then over here you can see that for some reason the width and the height of the template aren't correct as you can see here. So I'm just going to fix that by putting in these figures here. 12.49 inches times 9.25 inches. The next thing I'm going to do is create an artboard for it. So I'm going to click on the artboard tool and then just draw out a rough artboard and then once again resize it to these dimensions here. I'm going to select my template and then just align it to the center. The next thing I'm going to do is select my template and just lock it into place. So I'm just going to right click on it over here in the layers panel and then click on lock. So now you can see that it's locked into place and it's not going to move around. The next thing I'm going to do is copy my front cover onto the template and then just place it accordingly on the cover. I'm going to make it bigger to fit the template and then I'm going to reduce the opacity over here to 50%. Now I'm going to do the same with the back cover and then I'm just going to align it onto the dotted lines you can see here if I zoom in and then once again resize it to fit the template and then over here you can see that with the opacity reduced everything's in place so what I'm going to do now is restore the opacity back to 100% and then with both of these selected, I'm going to click on Command and G to group them. And then this template underneath which I locked, I'm going to click on this button here, this tick button, to hide it. So now you can see that the template underneath is hidden and when the book gets exported, the template layer isn't going to remain underneath. Now I'm going to click on File, Export. I'm going to make sure that PDF is selected and then for the preset I'm going to make sure that it's PDF flatten and then for the area it's going to be artboard number 3 and then I'm going to click on export and save it as design 1 so now you can see I have my completed cover I hope you enjoyed this video and found it beneficial if you did then don't forget to like it and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos like this